Waiting can be painful. This is especially true for Jamila and the rest of the Clearwater Southern team who've been patiently waiting for Johnson aggregates to come to town. But as the days become weeks and the weeks become months, it's starting to become more apparent that the investment in Magnolia County could be the downfall of Clearwater Southern. And just about the time that the Clearwater Southern team was about to give up hope, a letter arrives in the mail from Johnson Aggregates. The letter reads, Johnson Aggregates remains committed to bringing copper mining to Magnolia County. However, the company has significant concerns with the condition of the tracks between Bend Superior and Detroit, Michigan. And until such a time where track improvements are made along the route to ensure the safe travel of our heavy loads, the Bend copper mining operation is postponed. Truly, Sheila Johnson. And somehow, this letter ends up in the hands of the Ben Daily News, which swiftly publishes the full contents of the document. Magnolia County officials quickly reach out to Jamila to ensure that Clearwater Southern is aware of the Consolidated Rail Infrastructure and Safety Improvements Program, or CRISI for short, which includes funding for track improvements along freight corridors that also have passenger service. They explain that they would be willing to coordinate the smittle of an application with the states of Superior and Michigan so long as Clearwater Southern would pay the local share of the improvements, 10% of the total project budget. Further, the county would be seeking Clearwater Southern's enthusiastic support of a passenger rail station in Bend, which is being submitted as a separate request. Jamila and the Clearwater Southern team hate the idea of sharing their corridor with passenger service. However, they understand that they're not really in a position to negotiate. The proposal isn't perfect, but you can't let perfect be the enemy of good, and they agree to the proposal. After months and months of waiting, the states and county received the exciting news that their project was funded. Track improvements, bridge reconstruction, access consolidation, and double tracking will occur in targeted locations throughout the entire corridor, laying the foundation for Johnson aggregates to finally come to the county. News of the award sends shockwaves across the state, attracting even more people to the area. And here on the Superior Highway, a new resident is pulling into town with his trailer. He arrives at the Groovy Gray's farm and is quickly greeted by its owner, Nick King. It's good to have you here, man, but I'm really sorry about everything that happened in Superior City. I'm just looking for a new start, and I appreciate you letting me stay with you while I get established here. Anything for you, cousin. You're always welcome here. Just kick back and relax. Or, if you want, you're always welcome to come pick up hours at the bait shop. I appreciate that, cousin, but I've already got a plan. This place is going to need some local transportation services, so I was thinking of opening up a taxi company. Funny enough, there are no regulations here for taxis, so it should be pretty easy to set up and my fleet will be green too. Oh man, you're gonna make a killing, Chucky. We'll see, I just wanna have a purpose again. The next day, Chuckles puts an offer in on a property in the business park, and within a few weeks, he begins to set up shop. In today's episode, we'll build this new passenger rail station and improve the area directly surrounding it. And then we'll switch gears and build Chuckles' new taxi service, the Chuckle Shuttle. And near the end, we're going to add a couple of new farms around the region in what will become an ongoing project near the end of each episode. And if you're excited to see Chuckles again, hit the like button. If you were hoping that he'd leave Superior, hit the like button for that too and leave a comment letting me know what you would have preferred. Or leave this emoji to celebrate Chuckles' return for the sake of engagement. And without any further ado, let's jump right in. Hello and welcome back to Magnolia County. We're going to kick things off by building our passenger train station. And we're going to build that right here. And there are three reasons why I love this location. First and foremost, we're going to need some space for this train station, which means using eminent domain. And most of the uses right here are low density uses, which means that it'd be relatively inexpensive in the scheme of things to purchase these properties and condemn them for the purpose of building this station. Now, if we had a bunch of mid rises like this, that would be considerably more costly. So I'm really happy that we only have row homes, a couple of commercial buildings, and some single family homes. Second, this location is relatively close to the highway. So for anyone that's not living directly adjacent to the station, they would be able to drive here relatively easily. And if we place some parking and some well-placed pedestrian amenities, hopefully get to our station without any problems. And third, we have some elevation differences here in between Eisenhower Street and Lincoln Street. And I think we can use them to our advantage. We can see that if we go into our contour view, we've got probably eight, 10 meters of elevation difference in between Eisenhower and Lincoln. And my idea is that we'll basically elevate this entire site to be the same height as Eisenhower Street and then go right over the top of Lincoln and then bridge down to get to our mainline height. So this will allow us to eliminate one at grade crossing, something that I think would make this project more attractive to Clearwater Southern because they would absolutely be dead against this without uh, lots of improvements like this. So with all of that in mind, let's start using some eminent domain and we're gonna begin by basically eliminating every single use on this block right here. And I mentioned this in a previous episode, whenever we eliminate some existing uses and redevelop a site, we are gonna increase the density in these areas. This is one thing that we could do to make this project viable. 
And now I'm also going to eliminate this track and this pedestrian path right here. I'm sure that's controversial. We're still running, but in reality, we don't get to take a break and pause the game. So uh, we're going to keep it running here as well. Now, to be fair, I don't know that the railroad company would allow this to happen like this, but we're going to take some liberties. So maybe it's realistic and not at the same time. And now let's place our station. And I think we've got enough space here. Yeah, we've got plenty of space. I want to center this nicely in between these two blocks. And it looks like about three units is perfect. And we'll place that right there. Now, I want to take a look at the heights here to make sure. I mean, I think that we can just tie this directly in, but we should double check. And at least for this rear edge, we can absolutely go straight across. Now, over here, it's going to get more tricky. I've got a couple of ideas. First of all, we're just going to go right over the top here, and it looks like we should be able to clear the road no problem. It looks like we'll be going up just a little bit unless we change the road. So I'm going to try to lower Lincoln Street down just a little bit. And I've got an idea, actually. This is probably a bad idea, but we're going to roll with it anyway. Sometimes you got to take your bad ideas and attempt to do something good with them. What I'm going to do is attempt to have a retaining wall all the way along here. Mostly because I think it would look cool. <laughs> There's no other good reason for this. I just like it. So we'll have on only snap to existing geometry and 90s. I need to drop this down probably one elevation step so I can clear it. I will just be up front with you and say that there was some very strange things going on with this road, but I got my retaining wall that I wanted. I even get to see under the upside down. So I guess we've also got that going for us. Why don't we just back this out? That should fix that for us. All right. Now I want to clear this as low to the ground as I can. And again, snap to existing geometry, snap to 90s. And then we want to keep this as flat as we can. Ooh, that is pretty right there. That is very, very nice. So I am a bit concerned about these other ones. We're going to clearly need to use some more eminent domain, but I want to come in at something that feels fairly reasonable and logical. First of all, I'm going to extend this back. I want to keep this sub 3% grade if possible. So we'll back this out as far as we can and rebuild this entire track. The height of realism. Ooh, 2.3. That is a good grade. And now there's this part, and I will be upfront and say that as someone that is not as well versed at rail, I'm going to take some liberties here. And if I'm making some terrible mistakes, I'm going to count on you to help me. So I'll extend this to here and then we'll use the continuous tool to basically line up with our main line. And then I'm going to angle this in. And then I think for this other track, I'm going to cross the road, obviously. And then I'm going to turn this thing into our other track over here. And I'll try to get that to be as straight as possible, simply for aesthetic purposes. Oh, I like the way that looks. Let me know if this is reasonable. If you happen to know, if you work at a train company, if you are a train tr uh, engineer, let me know if that is reasonable or not. Now for this other one, I know that has to go. These may also have to go. In fact, I'm going to say that they do. And I just want to look at our terrain heights here. I'm a little concerned, even though it's not bad, it's train tracks and things that don't look bad get bad. So I'm going to back the road out and we'll work on the track first and then we'll add our road back in. Now, that also means that I could lose the name Eisenhower and Lincoln Street because we've just demolished both of them. So if I forget to replace that, please drop in the comments. I don't want to lose those names. I don't know that I've ever taken on a more frustrating project in this game. I think I've rebuilt this about 40 times, but it looks okay. As long as it functions, I'm going to call it a win. Woo. So speaking of functioning, <laughs> we're going to draw a road here and then we'll draw our line. So I'm thinking that we want to have some sort of key wall here. So we're going to take this back. And I'm going to take it a long ways back because I want to use our alleyway here. 
And interestingly, you can see that this building is actually pulling the ground up. So we'll have to keep that in mind. So I'll use the alley and I just want to snap to the side of a building and we'll bump this up maybe a meter and a half, meter and a quarter rather. Okay, I'm pretty pleased with that. And then we're going to have a, some path connections through here, something coming straight out this way. But before we do that, I do want to establish our passenger lines. Our cargo line is operating in here again. So we're going to send our first line over to Nicolet Bay. That should be fairly straightforward. And then our second line will go out to Duluth. And there we go. We've got our two routes. Before we forget about these, I probably should have changed the color up front. I didn't do that. We are going to name them. So we've got Ben to Duluth and Ben to Nicolet Bay. Duluth line is maroon, light green for Nicolet Bay. I think that's going to work out well for us. I also want to take a look at these routes or the number of vehicles that we have assigned. We've got two. I just, I don't think we're going to see the utilization yet. So for both of these, we're taking it down to one vehicle. The other thing, we have some amenities that we can add here. And I just, from my perspective, this is a good addition to this area, to the train station. And interesting, it's not letting me add it because of a conflict here. Ah, I will get rid of that temporarily. This is actually what I was dealing with, with this track here. This the big concern is kind of an arbitrary conflict. There we go. I'm going to step away <laughs> because it's working. So now we should have passengers coming here. We need to think about pedestrian connectivity. So we're going to go with some pathways and I want to come right up the center here and we are going to cross the street because I think that we're going to use a bit of eminent domain right here on these properties. We're already inadvertently doing it anyway by adding paths. So let's just formalize it and I'm hoping we can make that connection a bit more gentle. And it won't be perfect, but we're going to just let this one go. <laughs> we're going to let a few things go. So now what I'm thinking is we'll have a path kind of cutting back here and we'll connect in between buildings. And then I want to reestablish the path back here that we deleted. And this one will be mostly decorative, but it will provide those accesses to this road and hopefully back to this path as well. Now that we have those, let's reestablish this path as well. This one is pretty messy. I'm wondering if we shouldn't just bridge over the top of this. And you might be curious about this path connection that I made right here. I don't like this either, but I do think that this might actually work as a path connection. So we'll just need to keep an eye on that. If it doesn't, I'm happy to uh, sever that, but we'll have to see and Ooh, some lumpies and bumpies here. I'm just going to try my best to forgive this. This might be one that I fix off camera because it'll take a long time. <laughs> All right, now let's get some zoning in place. And I want to front everything on this street right here, which is Magnolia Street. And before I forget, let's rename these. So we have Eisenhower and Lincoln back where they belong. And now we're just going to go with mid rise and mixed use right here exclusively and maybe one low rent housing. I think that it's really important if you have a low rent housing, having it close to transit is a way to keep it uh, at least the transportation costs affordable for all the folks that live here. I think it would make a ton of sense to have that here. So we'll go with maybe a three by three and see what the height is. Ooh, that's a little bit much. And that seems a heck of a lot more rational for our mid rises. We're likely going to need to do the exact same thing. Same thing with our North American mixed use. I do think I'm going to bring some row homes back and we will pretend that they are upscale and it's a couple of separate developments. So we're going to use some of our European right here, some of our North American right here. And then I want to reorient the zoning right here. Again, like I mentioned, we want to front this street. I'm going to leave some gaps for our paths. And one thing I noticed is that over here, I did leave a few European mixed use and mid-rise buildings. And I just want to see what this ends up looking like. We might end up leaving that behind. 
Now I'm gonna add a park right here like I mentioned, and this will either be a small park or a small plaza. I think the plaza is my preference. Feels a little bit more grand, and then we'll get rid of that road right there. And I just wanna center the view right on that fountain. So the idea being that you walk right down here, you, I guess you jump over this, and <laughs> you get to see that. Yeah, that, that to me feels appropriate. I like that a lot. So let's let this fill in and see what our new neighborhood looks like. And I'll just be upfront. I think that this looks pretty darn good. So we're going to leave some of the European assets here. Gives us a little bit more diversity of our buildings anyway. And we get the feeling that these are separate developments, which I really appreciate. So now you're going to draw some paths in between here. What we detail in the future. We'll likely add in a bit of landscaping on either side of these. And I'm trying not to touch anything so that I don't break zoning. Oh yeah, I, I really, really like that. The one thing I don't like is right here. I think I went a bit extreme on this. So we will go back to our normal commercial right here. So we've eliminated those in favor of these couple of smaller commercial buildings. The scale is probably more appropriate in this area for these sorts of buildings anyway. So I feel like we're stepping down and I really, really like that. And I've let things simulate for just a little while to see where things would shake out here. And there's a couple of interesting things happening. First of all, we're seeing some high rent signs go up and really that's the value of this area increasing. And then secondly, I clicked around some of these homes around the edge of this area and I can see that we've got some crime issues. So that makes me think that maybe this is a good time to think about city services generally. So let's work on some city service improvements. Over the last couple of episodes, the physical size of our city has increased quite a bit. And as a result, I wanna take a look at some of our basic city services, as well as add one service in particular that we don't have in the city. So let's begin with our police coverage. And to get into this, I need to go over this icon that you see right here first. This little backpack is the Legacy Flavor Mod. Now I wanna point this one out because I'm disabling it temporarily. We now have this great user interface that allows us to go through and actually enable the whiteness that you normally see when you click on the zoning button or when you click on any of the info views. So I have that disabled right now. I could also use Alt S to toggle this, but I'm disabling it with this button right here. Uh, this mod does a ton of other great stuff too. So if you want to be able to customize your zoning colors or adjust it for colorblind mode, you can do all of that through here. But we're not going to do any of that. I just want to make sure that I can see the info views because it's going to give us some interesting information about our police department in particular. So I mentioned that we had some crime issues over here and you can see that these buildings are complaining as are some of our newer ones. So I think the solution here is to add more patrol cars because ultimately that's what's going to drop our crime probability. So we're at 17%. Let's upgrade our police station to double the number of patrol cars that we have and we'll see what that does. So this is $18,000 per month and doubles the number of cars that we have on the road. I think it's gonna make a considerable difference, but we'll take a look. Actually, we've already dropped 1%. I'm going to let this run for just a moment and we'll see what happens. Our crime probability has dropped to 13% from 18. So I'm fairly pleased with that. And I guess this really comes down to how crime probability works. It works by uh, crimes being more prominent in places that don't have police patrolling in the area. So now that we've doubled the number of patrol cars that we have, you can see that they are going all over the place and patrolling. All of this said, we're probably going to need to add another police station or a police headquarters at some point, but that is a down the line thing. I think for right now, we are okay. I want to also take a look at our fire and rescue coverage. So that's been something that we've had a problem with for a while. You can see that our average fire hazard honestly isn't that bad, but I do want to add some fire watchtowers, particularly in the areas around where we've developed. So I think that we're going to have to unlock those. Indeed we are. It's one development point. Now, one little bit of curiosity here. So I'll unlock these, but the firefighting helicopter depot is two points and I haven't unlocked it yet. So let's see what this does for us. 10% less forest fire ha hazard within one kilometer and 80% less forest fire response time within a kilometer. But I don't know how we'd be able to respond to it except from the road. So that's very interesting. For the firefighting helicopter depot, we could add that, except that it's incredibly expensive and the upkeep is basically three police departments. So I just, I don't think this makes a ton of sense just yet. 
So we will go with this. And now keep in mind, as we're measuring things in police departments, one of these is half of our upgraded police department per month. So I think we're going to place two of these. We're gonna use these very judiciously and I don't wanna overdo it. So I think we'll protect perhaps our little farming district over here. So I'm gonna add this. I don't think adding this to a hill is gonna make any difference outside of making it look better. So I'm gonna add it a little ways up and we'll need to connect this up to a road, I believe. And then we'll add one more closer to town, maybe right, I'd add it right here, but we wouldn't have a way to access it. So I think I'm gonna add this closer to our suburb and try to protect the forest just north of town. And between the two of these, that's the cost of a police department. So we're gonna need to be a little bit more thoughtful about these. And indeed we do have to connect a road up here. So we'll, we'll go with a gravel road. There we go. Now we've got some fire protection up here. Just curious, we can't upgrade these. They just kind of are what they are. And uh, we'll have to see how this operates, but at least we have some protection over here for all of our agriculture. Next, we'll take a look at our garbage management. It looks like we're doing okay for now, but we are producing a ton more garbage than we can actually process. So we are probably gonna wanna reconsider our garbage at some point in the near future. And reasonably, I think we may just move our trash over to the Copper Valley Industrial Park, but we'll hold off on that, that because I think that that could be a larger, more comprehensive build. Next, we'll take a look at our education, and it looks like for the most part, we're doing okay. We're gonna wanna keep tabs on our elementary school availability, though. We are starting to reach our capacity, so as the community grows, this will become an issue. And then finally, I wanna take a look at the one service we have in place, that is post offices. So there was an issue with post offices in the past that was resolved in the most recent update. So I wanna add this to our downtown area. You can see that our coverage is terrible. So I've been thinking that maybe somewhere just behind Main Street would make sense. Maybe here on Belmont and Ashland, and it opens up the opportunity to increase the density along Belmont Street generally. So we're gonna use a bit of eminent domain right here. And before these buildings start to redevelop, I am going to dezone in this area. And just after dezoning this, I had to take a momentary break. I didn't like the way the visuals were looking in legacy flavor. So I went into the zoning settings and I went into custom zoning coloring and I was able to change the transparency of these so things look a little bit better, at least to me. So let me know how you feel about this. I like the way that this looks. This is kind of how I wanted the game to look when uh, when I first saw it. So I'm gonna leave it like this because I think it gives me more information. But if you don't like it and you wanna see the default view, please let me know. Back to our post office. I think we'll dezone this one as well for continuity's sake. I'm gonna leave these right here, but eventually I think we're gonna need to take these over. The post office has two sub buildings. We've got our post van garage, which gives us mo more post vans. And you can see this fits. We've also got our mail storage extension. This also fits if we don't have our other extension. So we'll likely need to move Ashland Street back one tile in the future. And all of these buildings right here will be taken out. So that'll be something that we think about in the future. But right now, we'll just leave them as is. And uh, warning shots have been fired. <laughs> they know. And I am going to increase the density over here. We'll say that the city had a rezoning process as part of this. We're through the comprehensive planning process. They changed the zone. It became something that could happen in the future. Maybe it wouldn't all happen at once. We could even just say, leave a couple of these homes, but show that the densities have changed over time and have a nice mix of densities through here. So I like that. That gives a, a little bit of context and some history in this area. Yeah, big fan of that. Now, the other thing to consider with a post office is you can also add mailboxes. So we'll wanna take a look at that to improve our coverage. And you see that basically the building color is the mail accumulation. And you can see that some of these have very high accumulation and the post coverage is on the network. Now, things look pretty good throughout most of Belmont proper, except for in our newer area. So we'll need to add a post office box somewhere here. I think I'll add that near Magnolia Street. And then we'll add another one right over here on School Street. So not on what is a pretty important collector connection right here, but very close to it. And then we're obviously gonna need to add some in our rural area and in our industrial park. And by one, I meant three. <laughs> so 
I added one by our city services complex, one in our little industrial area, and then one over here right by Jamila's office. And then finally, in our little rural area, we're gonna add one near the entry point of our residential subdivision. And I think that will do it for us. And I think our very last one to take a look at is healthcare. And for the most part, we seem to be doing okay. In that regard, our average health isn't great. That can really only be solved by adding a hospital, I believe, which we just aren't in a position to do just yet. So with our city services in check, let's move on to building the Chuckles Shuttle. For the development of the Chuckles Shuttle, we're gonna be stepping away from Bend and to the Copper Valley Industrial Park. And we're gonna open up phase two of development of the park and place our new taxi service right here. But I don't wanna just stop with the taxi service. We will develop this entire area. So with the taxi service, I wanna begin using alleyways and we're gonna set this a couple of units back from the road. And I'm gonna add this frontage road right here all the way back and we'll try to use some of the existing access points that we have to get into this area. This would minimize the number of junctions that we have on the collector roadway network all the way around here. And then for our taxi service, we'll place our taxi depot first. And then I wanna add a couple of upgrades to this. The first one is the dispatch center. This will make it so that people can be picked up anywhere in the city, not just at dedicated taxi stands. This is gonna be important, particularly in our rural area. And then Chuckles wants an electrified fleet. We can't electrify the entire fleet, but we can do that for at least a quarter of the fleet. And truthfully, it kinda of makes sense anyway. This is a cold weather climate, and oftentimes you'll want to have some sort of gasoline backup at least right now, that might change in the future, but that is where we are at. Now for the rest of this park, what I'm thinking is we'll do something very similar to what we did over here. We're going to just add in alleyways and we'll separate things a little bit. What I've basically tried to do here is provide a little bit of separation, some sweeping movements through here so that semis could get through fairly easily. And we're gonna really finish things off with some pedestrian connections to block the zoning from the collectors. So it's really trying to control things as much as we can to ensure that zoning is occurring where we want it to occur and in ways that line up with how we might want it to happen. And honestly, I could keep drawing all these pedestrian connections all day. I really enjoy doing it, but I'm gonna stop here for just a moment and we're gonna add in some of our zoning. So I wanna have a nice mixture of industrial and office and parking lots. And one of the things I'm a little bit concerned about is that we have no office demand. And I think part of that is we're making a ton of money because our tax collection's just through the roof. So I'm gonna drop this all down a little bit Honestly, high taxes are one of the few complaints that we have, so this should improve that as well. And we'll take things down to 10%. We'll see how that works. It looks like it's in equilibrium, so maybe it won't be that bad once we zone things in. Speaking of zoning, let's start adding it in. Now I've loaded this all up and added some more paths through here to make our little connections in between our outer path and the inner road. And I'm gonna let this fill in for just a moment and see what we come up with. One of the recent updates made warehousing much more prevalent in City Skylines too. And you can kind of see that here. We've only got four of our industrial sites with smokestacks, which gets me really excited because that's one thing that I don't really like about the old portion of our industrial park just a ton of smokestacks, even in some of these smaller buildings. So I'm thinking that we might call a couple of mulligans, just some little ones, just to try to get rid of some of these smokestacks and make it feel just a little bit more reasonable. Now, I don't know that this is dramatically better, but it is at least a little bit better. So we are gonna roll with it. There are two more things I wanna do in this area before we move on. The very first one is a little bit of street naming. And I think that right here, we're gonna name this King Street. The idea being that Charles King would have been the first person to develop here and would have named this road after himself. 
and then I've taken the time to name just a couple more of these as well. We need one more thing in this area though, and that is, ooh, what is that? Oh, it's burned down. Ooh. So I guess we'll rebuild this. <laughs> it looks like it still has service though. Is this, are we actually seeing? Okay, it's not working <laughs> because it's burned down, but the, but the trains are still coming here. Okay, we'll just rebuild this. Oh, it wants to, does it want me to replace it? I'm a little bit confused. I guess I have to click it again, and now it's back. And all of those things that we had in storage are still here. Nothing to see here, folks. Everything is just fine. <laughs> okay, back to what I was saying. I think that we need some sort of service station. And I think we're going to put that right off Progress Street. So I want a truck stop sort of feel here with maybe a couple of stores that the folks working over here could go and have lunch at. So we're going to set this a little ways back. And then we'll curve in right here. And then I think that the largest that we can go here is six by five. I think if we go six by six, it turns into two buildings. So let's try that. And hopefully we get a gas station right here. We'll give ourselves two shots though. I'm gonna block this off. Interesting, that street is not actually straight. Now we've got two shots. We'll go with a six by four, and then we'll have this two by six as well and see if, uh, if we get a service station in any of those. All right, and our buildings have filled in and we got convenience food, pharmaceuticals and pharmaceuticals. Okay, neither of those are what we wanted. I'm going to eliminate those and I'm noticing something that I really don't like. While these are filling in, we're gonna, gonna make some improvements. I'm seeing that trucks are using this lane right here as a cut through. So perhaps our solution to that is upgrading this road to be a highway. Now, I think that we're using that road to carry utilities. So we'll likely need to take a look at that as well, but I'm just gonna upgrade this. And then, yep, we were carrying utilities through there. So we'll add some new water pipes underneath the road, right where they belong. And then for power, we're just gonna light this street. So we'll go into our lighting here. And I think that this is the perfect place to provide lighting. This is a fairly urbanized environment. And I just wanna double check. It looks like we have power over here. We are good to go. And we've got two new businesses, beverages and beverages. Okay, this makes me think that maybe we just need to take a look at where we have successfully attracted a gas station elsewhere and take a look at the size of the building. And here on Main Street, we have one. It is commercial. We zoned three by five, but it's actually a three by three building. So let's take that knowledge back over here with us and see if we can actually attract one right here. And as much as I hate to do this, I think we're just going to sever this connection right here because we're still seeing some of that cut through traffic that I think doesn't make a ton of sense. I've been playing whack-a-mole for a while, and for whatever reason, I'm not getting the types of businesses here that I'm looking for. I'm getting things like cheap and random textiles and pharmacies and all sorts of other things. So what I'm thinking that we're gonna do is go into our taxation and adjust things here. So I want to entice petrochemical companies to come here. Now, interestingly, I can't actually lower the price on them from a commercial standpoint. I'm hoping in industrial I can, I can't. So I'm going to just take this down to nothing. And hopefully doing this will attract some petrochemical commercial companies. It shouldn't line up like that, but I'm kind of out of options. This is the one that seems to be the best option for us at this point in time. Okay, I've played whack-a-mole for a few more minutes. I've adjusted the taxes a bunch and we're still not attracting petrochemicals. It makes me wonder if this is a new issue with the game because it really seems like we should be able to attract petrochemicals within our commercial building types considering it is a commercial building type. So I'm going to stop spending time on that because I don't know that it's necessarily beneficial. If we can attract that, I've got another idea. But we're going to save that for the future. And for now, I guess all the folks at Chuckles are going to need to drive a long ways to get some fuel. For now, I think we're going to move on to adding some new farms. 
We're going to focus on adding some new farms directly across from Bend, and we'll purchase this tile right here. And I think for most episodes, we'll go one tile at a time. And again, like I mentioned in the previous one, we'll try to really mimic the Jeffersonian grid by adding roads along the sides of the tiles here. So we'll use the alley as the collector and go about a unit off from the edge of our tile. And then I'm adding this road right here. This will eventually be our highway. We're going to extend that next, but the highway can't go straight through the rail. That wouldn't make a ton of sense. Now you can get a feeling for how we will eventually jog this over and we'll need to find a place to cross our railroad track, but it's not going to be right here. The one thing I do want to improve before we move on from extending our highway is there was a pretty significant drop off here with our terrain. So we're going to use our slope terrain tool just to smooth things out a little bit. And then I decided to add a turning lane right here. Maybe it's not entirely necessary, but I think in the future it will be. So we'll just plan for the future right now. Definitely not how it would happen in real life. And there we go. Nice and easy. Now I'm going to add one more local alley. And the point of this one is basically that I think we're going to need to have at least two farms right here. Now, for all of these, when we're adding farms, I really want to think about what we need or what we have the least amount of. So we're going to go back into our production chain and you can see that it looks like livestock and agricultural products are our deficits right now. Again, we're not doing cotton. Doesn't make sense in this climate. I think we'll go with something like that. So a little bit more visual interest in terms of the way that our building is placed here. And we should be able to cover this entire area right up to our forest. Now that we've got our farms and our homes in place, I'm going to add some utilities here before we get too far along. And then for these ones, well, I could just add lights to the road. That doesn't feel very rural to me. So we are going to add some of our electric cables to the side of the road here. And there we go. For these, power, these electric cables, we just have to get one of the posts on the dirt road or the, I guess this is an alleyway, and then it makes our connection. So that is perfect. Let's draw in our fields. And there we go. We've got two new farms. Green enough biofuel. Go figure. <laughs> we get biofuels over here and uh, livestock right there. Very, very good. And I just want to check and see what this has done to our production. Truthfully, it hasn't really put much of a dent in it. So we could continue to build all the farms in the world. I love it. And with our new farms added, let's move on to a bit of landscaping and detailing. For our detailing, I think we'll begin where we began and we'll end where we ended with our builds. So I want to decorate this area just a little bit. And the very first thing we've got to do is get rid of the trees that are here and we'll replace those. I'm going to be honest with you, I have real mixed emotions about doing this. And if we didn't have that new line tool that allows me to replace some of the adult trees, I probably wouldn't have done that. However, because we do have that, no harm, no foul, we will add those right back in. And I want to start out with some of the oak trees because they are absolutely outstanding. So control L to bring up the line tool. And then just like last time, if we just grab and pull a little bit, we can add just one full adult sized tree. So there are a couple of locations where I want to do this. So I've covered up some of those harsher edges and made it feel like maybe we preserve some trees. And for the rest of this, we're just going to go wild. I think that that looks pretty good. Just a little bit of landscaping to liven the area up. Let's move over to our industrial park and it's the same drill over here. We'll get rid of all the trees before we replace them. Now 
Now, the interesting thing here is most of our office still has not come in. So some of these trees will go away, but we won't worry about that right now. We'll just have these here waiting for new tenants. Now, one thing we didn't do is rename our taxi depot. So we need to do that. And while it's on my mind, I think that we have an area zoned right here for office. I'm going to dezone this because this building has sub buildings. And if we need to add a garage, we can get rid of this path or relocate it and then add them back here. And then momentarily, I want to return to this area. I'm just thinking it might be beneficial to have a taxi shelter over here. Now, I know this isn't needed to make this operate, but it will give a place for taxis to queue and being right at the edge of this would be ideal. So we'll place that right here, which will give us an absolutely ridiculous queuing area. So I'm going to add a node. So I'm basically just going into the road tool. And if I double click in the middle of the road, it should adjust the length of this or break half of our buildings, <laughs> which is really sad. But all we had to do was add our path here, hopefully temporarily. Yep, all of our landscaping came back as baby landscaping and we're good to go. I think it's worth it to be able to get this here. And I'm guessing if we speed this up for a moment, we're going to see people start to. Yeah, look at that. We've already got people queuing here. It's the perfect spot to queue. Why wouldn't you want to wait at the shelter? And I'm back over in the industrial park because I do think that we need to add a bit of landscaping here. Nothing all that big. We wouldn't want to block the views from the road of this facility. So we'll basically add a couple of apple trees right there and then some scattered bushes. I'm just going to kind of spray this. I decided to call a little bit of a mulligan here, remove some of that stuff and add in some cultivated green bushes. And I like that a ton more. And then last but certainly not least, we will take a look at our farm here and improve things. Boy, oh boy, the line tool is just such a pleasure to use to be able to get these large trees to be able to get these perfectly spaced in a nice line it just makes it look so, so good. And now that we've finished up with this, I think there's only one more thing left to do. Let's take inventory of what we've done today with a brief city tour. go we've changed a lot in the underlying build today i want to take a look at our statistics to see how things have evolved the very first one is transit and we have 365 people using the chuckle shuttle and 582 using our trains which is pretty exciting not very many tourists though 18 total not great i'd like to have more tourists in the region than i could count on my hands and feet but that is a project for another day let's also take a look at our police coverage would you look at that? Our crime probability has dropped from 18% to four. That is outstanding. 0% crime success rate. I don't know that we could, I mean, I know that we can't do any better than that. That's, that's really, really good. Looking at our fire hazard, we're at 24%. I think that's about where we were at the start of this. So this hasn't really improved anything. It just cost us money. Maybe we need to go all the way. Let me know how you feel about that in the comments. And then finally, let's take a look at our postal coverage. Ooh. Even though we just added that, it looks like it's already at capacity. So we'll likely want to take a look at adding a distribution center or even expanding our post office, one of the two in a future episode. And then finally, look at our money. We're at a pretty good equilibrium here, which I'm pretty excited about. We don't need to be generating ridiculous amounts of money every hour. So I'm happy to lower the taxes and leave things right here where they're at. 
Before we go though, there is one thing I have adjusted that I want your opinion on. So I've turned off fog to try to brighten things up and I've enabled the developer settings to disable some of the precipitation. It can rain an awful lot in city skylines too, so going into the developer menu and disabling precipitation can make things feel a little bit brighter, preserve some FPS. If you like the way this looks, maybe I will continue to do it. If you don't, I will stop doing it. The other thing that we could change is I can adjust the climate time. Right now, we're about a quarter of the way through the year, which is spring. If you freeze this, you can actually continue to keep this looking this color, keep the LUT the way that it is. If you disable it, however, you get whatever you get. So in the winter, that means everything looks blue, gray, and sad. So let me know if this matters to you, if you like me to keep it natural, or if you want it to look like this. I'm going to let you guys be the judge of that. And I really hope that you've enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider hitting the like button. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. And I just want to tell you, it's a real privilege to be able to bring these videos to you. It's not something I take for granted. There's a million things that you could have been doing and you decided to hang out with me and I appreciate that. Thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.